Okay, so let's take a look now at the actual functionality or the operation, more importantly, of a transfer model inverter. Now, what we'll run through is the default settings, the PS6 functionalities that we just spoke about before. We'll focus on how that operates. So you can see here currently the display is turned off. What we'll do now is we'll actually plug the caravan into mains power. You'll see there the screen powers up, runs through the vision of software on the unit. And all of a sudden there, straight away, you heard the beep that was actually off the uh, microwave turning on, but we can see the status there has gone green. Now, as we can see on the side here, we can see the indication showing green is it is in transfer mode. So that's without pressing any models. And that's why we like the PS6 functionality. Great application there for if your van's in storage, you can still have some power turned on. However, the inverter function will not work. So if we turn the power off, for example, at the moment, we can see there no lights on. So I've actually lost power to the, all the equipment. That is great again, that if the van is in storage, for example, somebody pulls a plug, you don't have any residual power draw being drawn from the inverter in this functionality. Uh, but what we'll do there again now is we'll turn the mains power back on. There we go. It's qualified the power already. It's gone, yes, it is good with the frequency and the voltage. It's transferring through. What I'll do now is press and hold the power button there, turn the unit on. So now what we have there is showing the voltage display. The green one there is showing that if it's volts, or the orange will go to the kilovolts, kilowatts, sorry. So what we can see here now is we've got the green button showing the DC voltage. And if it goes to the other functionalities through there, you can see we can scroll all the way through the settings there to see what we have them set up. Because we're in the transfer mode at the moment, it won't actually show the kilowatts reading display there if it comes up as orange. Now, because we've actually got the inverter turned on, we'll simulate again, we've just lost power. And straight away, very quickly without the microwave even repowering, we've transferred straight across to actually running off the inverter. This can be seen because we've now got the orange light showing that it's inverting. So that's a great application where if you are camping and you're actually on the caravan, um, your four wheel drive, your camper trailer or your boat, for example, if you want that backup power. So if you do lose power and you still want the inverter to activate instantly, have the display turned on. Very simply, if you don't want the inverter turned on anymore to save some power, press and hold the power button there and the unit turns off. It is always recommended that if you are free camping with no AC power available, to turn off the inverter when it's not required. This does reduce the standby current quite considerably if it's over a 24 hour or 48 hour period when you are free camping and looking after um, maintaining all the battery capacity you possibly can. So that's the functionality of the transfer inverter from the remote control. All right, so here's one great application for inverters that we're hearing and seeing a lot more of nowadays, especially whether it be your four wheel drive canopy or caravans as well. Nowadays, people are getting a little bit more concerned about carrying gas around, so they're wanting to go all electric systems. So this is just a very basic induction cooktop here. But let's run through the system, showing the functionality of it, uh, and also some DC current draws there. So I've got this one here just running now, one liter of water in there. I've got it at a 1200 watt setting there at the moment. So Kane, what sort of current are we pulling there at the moment on the battery? Around the 104 amps. About 104 there. So let's, for example, uh, let's go up to 1600 watts. And Kane, what sort of current draw we got there now? Uh, looking around the 138. 138. Most of these units here uh, max out around about the 2000 watts. So 2000 watt there. We'll obviously boil the water a lot quicker. And what current draw have we got there now, Kane? Uh, around the 180. Around about the 180. Now, a tip with some of these units as well is on this particular unit here, this one here is just a, a Kmart one. Anywhere below the 800 watt setting, it still actually draws 800 watts, but what it will do is turn on and off over a period of time. So it will still actually be drawing 100 watts. It's turned off at the moment, and then it will turn on again soon. So just keep an eye out for that. Now, question is, is it better to run at a lower wattage, which will take longer to boil the water, or is it better to run at a higher wattage, drawing more power, but for a shorter period of time? In most applications we see, it's actually better off to do the higher wattage setting and reduce the actual usage time. Um, in real experience, that shows quite often that the water will be boiled in around about 3 minutes 45, much quicker than if you're running it around about the 1200 watt setting, where it will take about 8 minutes and will actually consume more of your battery capacity. Now, our friends over at Aussie Destinations Unknown 
and also Trip in a Van have got many great videos showing real world applications of cooking where you can see the current drawers that they're pulling. One that we've just heard of recently was actually cooking a mud cake and I'll just um, refer to some figures that we got yesterday. So they cooked a, uh, a mud cake in one of the Phillips air fryers. Now that was at 140 degrees, perfect cooking temperature I hear for a mud cake, 55 minutes to cook and it consumed 48 amp hours. So therefore on a 2000 amp battery for example, you've only consumed around about a quarter of the actual usable capacity there as well. So great application there for inverters that we're seeing a lot more in the marketplace now. As I spoke about first off in the uh, first chapter, some people say these would be an essential item, some say they're a luxury item, but either way we're seeing them a lot more and it's becoming the normal. So another question we quite often get and what is spoken about a lot of times around the campgrounds is, can I run an air conditioning unit off an inverter? The short answer is yes. However, some of the considerations should be taken to what sort of air conditioner you're using, how new it is, therefore how efficient, which will also then determine what size inverter you need. Now, an inverter drawing power from your batteries isn't an unlimited power source. So you will find that either you need a good charge coming in from solar, or if you need to also plug your car in to charge it. So it is only a limited period of time you can run air con units. So let's look at this particular one. It's a cold morning, so I've actually got it set down to 16 degrees. We know we've got around about 10 amps of current draw on here because we've got all the LED lights on the actual caravan at the moment. So the current draw that we're pulling at the moment is around about the 67 amps mark. Now that's entire load on the system. We turned our lights off as we discussed. We're probably gonna be pulling around about that 57 amps for the air conditioning unit. So what does that mean in real world application? So that 57 amps there, let's say we've got a 200 amp hour BTEC like we do on this caravan. Therefore would say your runtime with no charging source would be around about that three hour period just to allow a little bit of buffer at the end. Now that is good that if you're pulled over on your journey, you just wanna have a quick feed for lunch, but it's an absolute stinking hot day in the outback. You can have the air conditioning running for a short period of time during the middle of the day, just to have a nice bit of relax from the hot weather. Now, obviously in a normal situation, would have solar running on this one here. So with the solar on this particular caravan before, we saw around about 13 amps coming in from the solar system. So that would reduce that 57 from the air conditioning unit or 67 amps overall down to around about the 50 amps so therefore that's what's creating the longer period of time so if you do choose to run an air conditioning unit from an inverter the key thing there is just power management keep an eye on how much current is being drawn compared to how long you have to use and that's a great benefit of something like the EnerDrive ePro screens they do actually show how long you have out of your battery bank before they go flat or similar to the Cymarine units as well. So just keep an eye on it. Yes, you can, but it's not an unlimited power source. So always keep an eye on what the current drawer is, what's going into the van, because you don't want to have flat batteries.